Welcome back to Our World with Black Enterprise. Depression is an illness that affects many people in the African American community, yet too often it remains in the dark. How can we talk about depression and other forms of mental illness without the shame, the stigma, or the silence? Here to help me talk about that is Basi Ikbi, who is the founder of the Seaway Project, which spreads global mental health awareness in the black community. I'm also joined by Jeff Gardier, who is a psychologist and mental health advocate, and Terry Williams, who's the author of the critically acclaimed book, Black Pain, It Just Looks Like We're Not Hurting. Thank you all so much for being here. I meet so many people who say they suffer from depression, but they whisper it to me. I read about people who struggle with depression, but they never sort of publicly talk about it. Why does that happen? I think it's the ultimate stigma. Um, many of us see it as a character flaw, a sign of weakness. Um, because we're a very faith-based people, we think that to do anything other than to take it to the Lord in prayer is blasphemy. And we also see that there are genetic factors, uh, that there is heritability when it comes to the issues of depression, and therefore people are not necessarily responsible, in most cases not responsible for their depression, but we look at them and we say, well, why can't you just get out of bed? Why can't you just get up and go to work? Why is it that you're just moping around? You know, just pull yourself together. And I think when people hear that, it pushes them further into depression and they become ashamed of something that other people think that they are now responsible for. And I don't think that people really understand uh, that it is a medical condition. I think people think it's something, like you said, a character flaw, something that they can get over, something that they're not trying hard enough to deal with. And I know people who often say, look, I'm, I'm just sad a lot or I'm tired a lot. And I don't think they necessarily self-assess in a way that lets them know what, what's really I going on. I think you're right about that, Mark. I was going to say that, so for, for many of us, we haven't named our pain. We don't know what it looks like, feels like, or sounds like. But it's literally everywhere we turn. When we don't deal with uh, our day-to-day -day challenges as well as those of our past, we self-medicate. We will do anything to not feel the real pain that what we're self in. What does self-medication look like? We self-medicate with drugs, with alcohol, with food, with sex. work, pr promiscuous, unprotected sex, shopping when we don't have any money, gambling, and the violence that we see in our streets every single day. Well, and, and, and that's why it's important that people understand what it is that they do have, naming that pain, but also being diagnosed. Do you have a unipolar depression, which is sadness more days uh, than none uh, for a period of two weeks where you're just completely despondent? Or do you have a dysthymia, which is sort of like a chronic, low-level uh, sort of depression that you're carrying for two years? Or um, is it something like a bipolar or cyclothymia, which is a... Um, a, a less severe form of bipolar. We need to know what it is that we have so that we can get the proper treatment, which is talking about it, the catharsis of therapy. And as well, we know that there are some great antidepressants that are out there. Yes, there are side effects, but they are really revolutionizing how people are dealing with their depressions. I have actually bipolar two disorder. Um, and I say I have as opposed to I am bipolar because I'm, I'm Basi Ikbi. It's what I have. Uh, and I think that once people realize that can you, this can you say just a little bit about that distinction because that's really important. Well, the difference it's... between bipolar one and bipolar no, 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 two. No, 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 no. The distinction between saying I have bipolar and I am bipolar. Well, when I say when when someone says I am, you become the disease. You become everything that 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 goes with that disease. Um, and when I say that I have it, it is something separate from myself that I can take care of. We have so much trouble, A, admitting that we have a problem, but then going to find help. And then we have this, we don't want to air our dirty laundry. We don't want to talk to other people about what's going on in our house. And that's what's killing us. And we all, it's almost like, like we, we feel like suffering is part of blackness, which is... Which well, that, that was the other that question I, I had, because I know for black people, but especially black women, there's already an expectation that you're going to be resilient, that you're going to be tough, that black women carry so much of a load. And so depression just seems like it's par for the course. People almost seem, uh, make women seem as if they're weak, if they're, if they're not handling all their sadness and all their stress that, and all their trauma that, on their that own. That has been your mission, hasn't it, to it, talk about it that? It really has been. And the, 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 the thing is, there's really no, unless you go to see a therapist. There's no real safe place for you to go and speak about what it is that's in your heart, in your spirit. And that's why, you know, to the amazing work that you're doing is that speak all around the country and create a safe place for people. I start by sharing my own story and then the floodgates open.
because people realize that they're not standing on that ledge by themselves. Just to jump on that, one of the major things is transparency. Uh, I have the luxury of being able to talk openly because I don't have a nine to five, I don't have a boss, so I don't have anybody, it's not gonna, it's not gonna ruin my life in any way. Right. But because I have that transparency, it allows somebody else, when I say, oh, I just got back from therapy and my therapist said da 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 da, -da on Twitter or on Facebook or wherever I am because it's something that, that I wanted to share, it allows somebody else to sort of DM me privately. So what, what's therapy really like? And so that's somebody who's gonna go find out. It's a slow process. It's not gonna be overnight. I, re I, I thought that, you know, we, we could end stigma tomorrow. And I think we need to go even more basic than that. And it's this whole idea of taking care of yourself, loving yourself, eating properly, sleeping properly. Oh. Uh, we find that people who don't take care of themselves, who have all sorts of physical issues, uh, their depression gets much worse. We talk a very good game of loving ourselves. We think we love ourselves. We talk a good game about loving ourselves, but when you allow people to treat you a certain way, you are not loving yourself. There are literally thousands of people watching this show right now who are struggling with depression or other forms of mental illness. So taking care of our bodies and our minds, yes. self-assessing, seeking help. Seek therapy, uh, get, diagnosed, get diagnosed, see your doctor, see what's going on. The point is, there should be no shame in your game. No uh, we have such high incidence of uh, mental illness, physical illness. We all are dealing with something in our lives. Exactly. Be proud of it, own it, That's be true. able to work on it. No one is gonna look down upon you. You may look down upon yourself, but it's oh so damn K. If I ever met you somewhere at a bar or met you someplace else, you said you're bipolar, depressed, I'm not like, well, I gotta run. I'd be like, well, that's interesting. Tell me more about that. I wanna know more about you. Stay right there, we'll be back with more Our World with Black Enterprise. Up next, we're in Harlem, New York, where one school is helping the community get in touch with its artistic side. Kids deserve art. They deserve high class, quality training in the arts, just like anyone else, and they deserve it in their community. And they should see beauty in their own community, not have to go downtown. Our World with Black Enterprise is sponsored in part by State Farm. Find an agent or get a quote at statefarm.com.